Okay, hey there. Some of you know me. Uh, my name is Eric Johnson. I teach EMT, EMR, and sports medicine over at Aliso Niguel High School, Capital Valley High School, and Laguna Beach High School. For those of you that don't, nice to meet you. Today we're going to be going over everything that's in that uh, GoPro, also known as the Acaso EK7000 camera pack that you got. So we're going to look at all of uh, the equipment laid out as well as a couple of other things that I thought would be important for individuals that wanted to send it out into the field. And we're going to break down what each of these components actually does and how it affects the camera. So this will be the first of a couple of videos. Uh, the next one that we go through will actually be how to use the different components. And then finally, we're gonna discuss how to best utilize the camera with your uh, different industry experts. So without much further ado, let's do it. And I do want to make a real quick note. I apologize if the quality is a little meh. Uh, I'm not actually using the Acaso EK7000 right now. I'm using my uh, Logitech Stream Cam. So it may look a little, uh, for lack of a better word, jankier than normal. So thank you in advance for your uh, understanding and all that. So let's do this. Now, I've laid everything out from the box. I've already unpacked it. I've already actually started using all of it. And I wanted to have everyone get a chance to see everything laid out before we started going through everything. So you can see that there are straps here that are uh, self-adhering through either a loop-through system or Velcro. There are smaller Velcro straps. There is a number of different uh, attachment pieces, and these are going to be pass-through attachment, attachment pieces. So they attach to a different piece. We have our standalone locking uh, pieces, and these are gonna be the ones that can immediately be locked into another more stable housing. We have additional sticky backed, um, uh, sticky backed pieces that will go with these actual uh, attachments, so you can attach it to, let's say a helmet or something like that. We have some very specific pieces. This one in particular is great if you are um, teaching something where you can attach this to a pole. This is actually designed for a bike handle, but uh, if you have something that's of that diameter, then you can use that. We have our remote, and the remote is something that is a very cool feature that we're definitely going to want to integrate in our, uh, in our packages going out to our skills instructors or our industry experts. We've got a little uh, micro, uh, micro towel or uh, microfiber towel for cleaning the camera lens and cleaning the housing. And then we move on to the big stuff. So we have our waterproof housing. This is actually a waterproof housing. It will uh, allow you to film in uh, at least several feet of water. I don't think that we have anything that that would really be applicable for, but it is good if you are anticipating a possible splash or some type of water immersion if you teach in that type of environment. We also have a secondary backing to the housing. This one doesn't make it waterproof, does it? but it does make it splash resistant. So this one can actually be looped through with uh, some of these uh, Velcro straps we talked about earlier. Now this next mount is probably the one that I think is gonna make the most sense for most of you. This one uh, operates like a clip, and you can clip it right onto uh, a belt or onto uh, a vest or something of that nature. Moving forward, we have our charging cable and this is actually a micro US, USB cable that can be utilized also for plugging directly into your computer so that you can pull all of that source video and picture down. We have our battery charging dock. We have our battery and I have it bagged in here for a specific reason that I'll talk to you guys about in just a little bit. We have our, this is half of what we also received. This is the uh, this is the SD card. I've already got the SD card installed in my camera. So what you're looking at right here is a larger housing so that you can plug it into a uh, SD reader. And we also have some uh, zip ties and a metal cable that can be used if you have a more permanent solution for housing that camera. And then of course, we have our uh, Acaso EK7000 camera and we're going to be going into this in detail in just a little bit. Now I've also got some other stuff here. Uh, please don't worry about the diffuser. That's not part of the kit. What I have here is a uh, knockoff Pelican case. This is not a brand name Pelican case. It's uh, 
uh, a completely random brand. I picked this up from my stream cam back when I got it in March for distance learning. Uh, this is a very reasonably priced box. I believe that it runs $15 at Harbor Freight and I'll be sure to put up a link so that you guys can go and purchase these and I'll explain why this is gonna be important in a bit. And then we have just a standard uh, Tupperware case. Now, this stuff is all gonna be important in just a minute, but I wanna talk to you guys about why all of this stuff is important piece by piece. So let's go through the easy stuff first. So first and foremost, we have our straps. These are very basic straps, they're looped through. Uh, if you go ahead and you loop your, uh, if you loop the piece through the top here, and then pull it, and then close this down, it locks. It's a very simple system. I guarantee that you've seen something just like this before. This is important because you can use this on pretty much every mounting platform that comes with the EK7000. So I'm gonna show you how to do it on one of the most uh, likely culprits of this pass-through, your remote. So this is the remote, as you guys can all see. And the reason that you would wanna do this is so that you can go ahead and wear this as a supplementary watch, let's say. So if you were to do this, and uh, I'm gonna show you guys, whoo, see? I'm gonna show you guys just how bad uh, of a time I have of putting on a watch on a daily basis, because, you know, I'm just not that coordinated, apparently. But pretty easy. So we have the watch here, and, and I'm calling it a watch, but really what it is, is a remote. And now, it's not the most elegant way to do things, but I've got this attached. So now I can press a button and I can take a picture, I can take burst photos, I can take a time lapse, or I can start video. So this is a great way for you to start doing something with your hands. And most of us are teaching in a very hands-on environment normally, so you want to be able to show your students how to do skills. What a better way than to free yourself up from doing the uh, fumble with the camera and everybody looks like they don't know what they're doing. Now it's just as elegant as you press this button down here where they can't see and it looks like magic. It looks like you've got somebody that's there working along with you. And like I said, there's multiple straps. So this can be used for the remote. It can be used for other mounting platforms as well. What are those other mounting platforms, Eric? Don't worry, nobody. I'll tell you. So these are different mounting platforms that you can find with your uh, with your camera and I've actually got one of them here. So this mounting platform obviously has a hole through it But right now it doesn't have anything to thread into okay This one does however have those little pass-through pieces So again, we can take this same strap and then we can attach it and we can wear it like a watch I mean, it'll be the most bulky and cumbersome watch you've ever seen. But if you really want to have that, you know, literally hands-on experience where you have a camera that follows your hands, this is a great way to do it. Some great applications for this would be if you want to be more integrated with your skills. So if you have a skill that really does require a lot of manipulation, let's say if you're in automotive and you want to show your students how to access a, uh, you want to show them how to do a basic oil change. And uh, because of it, you don't have a lot of ambient light and you don't have a lot of room. You have a couple options. You can uh, put this on your wrist, you can hold it in your hands, or you can make some type of, uh, some type of a chest rig or something like that to wear. And uh, before we get much further, there are those options out on Amazon. I just purchased one for myself. So I'll let you guys know how that all works when I get it. But this is a great way for you to actually have a... Uh, point of view that would be more with the hands that you would be working with. So just something to think about. And the, the housings that we've already talked about, they'll, they'll go into these in just a little bit, all right? So let's move on and talk a little bit more in depth about how some of these other things work. One of my favorite attachments is right here. This gimbal, or sorry, not gimbal, this, uh, this, this pass-through attachment, will fit on anything that has a thread. This is a pretty universally sized thread, so if you already have a tripod or something of that nature, or you are camera savvy and you've got something that you're using other um, type attachments with, this will make sense. And the reason that this is such a great attachment is because we can use it on a lot of these different houses. Immediately, we can use it on that clip that I talked to you about. So we have the ability to flip this directly onto a belt or a shirt or whatever. But you can do this and then bringing in another 
bringing in another piece. All that we have to do is unscrew this thumb screw. Place this in the middle, line up the circles. Can you tell that I failed that part of kindergarten? All right, there we go. Whew. Now we have a mountable platform. Now this platform can be mounted on a lot of different things. So if we have a more stable mount, if we have a place where we know we're gonna be mounting this a lot, we can use one of these mounts and then we can pull off the sticky backing and stick it right on and then it stays. And then if we don't want to use that anymore, we, if we need to move it, we have additional. So we can actually take that off, a little bit of rubbing alcohol and maybe a, maybe a soft um, putty, putty scraping tool, plastic putty scraping tool. And we can go ahead and pull that right off and then we can put this on as well. I'll be honest, I haven't had a chance to really mess around with this too much yet because I'm planning on sending my camera out into very uh, unforgiving environments, ambulance, fire engine, that kind of thing. So I'm not planning on using these very often, if at all, but they are there for you if you have a class that would benefit from having something like this, where if you wanted to have uh, a more stable platform in which to use. So I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use our culinary classes as a great example. If you know that you're going to be placing this camera in one position in the, in the classroom, which is your kitchen, then this actually makes a lot of sense. You can put multiple different mounts throughout the kitchen, so you can move the camera around. And I know that that sounds like a lot, but if you wanted to get into different camera angles and you've seen cooking shows before, you already know there's more than one camera filming the whole thing. And as you can see in this video, the one camera thing, it's just not as fun. So this is a great way for you to kind of flex your creativity. But let's keep going. Now we talked about some of the mounts and, sorry guys, guys and gals I should say. Um, I'm trying to pull all this stuff but keep my camera stable and steady. So you can see that it's already becoming a bit cumbersome for me. So what I wanna talk about next are the options to use this in a platform that makes sense for you, the teacher that's moving around. Now, we've already seen the clip, and we've already seen that on an on a, uh, attachment. You know, they say if you, if you drop it and you break it, um, they just fire you. I don't know. That's what I would do to myself if I broke this right now. But let's see this with the camera actually inside of the housing. Now, I do want to note, there's no protection for this camera right now. There's no, there's no waterproof housing. There's nothing like that. And, and that's going to be fine for 95% of the instructors with CCA. My, uh, my particular concern is that my camera is going to be going out into the field. And while this is going to be the best for getting full audio quality and full video quality, I do want to give my instructors the opportunity to utilize the waterproof housing. So we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Now, this isn't going to be good, uh, a, a very good platform, but most of us wear some type of a stiffer uniform shirt, whether that be a Dickies work shirt for our uh, automotive guys or our robotics guys or a, uh, a chef's jacket for our culinary teachers. And certainly for myself and uh, for our fire technology class, we're wearing a class B uniform. So there are lots of places where this can attach. But right now, for our purposes, I'm gonna put it on my t-shirt and show you, boom, I can wear it like this. It does look a little bit ridiculous. And that's why I went ahead and I ordered a secondary kit. So we're gonna try to see how that all works out because it actually has a chest piece and a chest rig. Now, I wanna show you a couple of other pieces and a couple other features that you should really be aware of before you start messing around with the camera too much. First and foremost, let's talk about this battery. I know, I know that most of you are familiar with how batteries uh, really need to be kept in a very specific environment, but I want to make sure that everyone's on the same page. So this battery is a lithium ion battery, and if it were to come in contact with some metal, then there could be a potentially uh, negative impact, you know, explosions, fires, melting things, so all around bad. So what I've done is I've saved one of the bags that one of the other components came in, and I'm gonna use that to store the unused battery. The Acaso EK7000 actually comes with two. So I've got one in the uh, camera right now, and I've got this one out. Charging is super easy. I was able to charge this in about 30 minutes after I got it from uh, the district offices yesterday morning, and they sit right into this housing. 
this housing is charged using this cable. You can use any other micro USB cable, but I'd probably stick with what the manufacturer has because of uh, you know different load types and you just don't wanna mess around with it too much, especially with lithium ion batteries. So that is why I've got that in the plastic bag. It will eliminate for the most part, any contact with any other metal pieces, which there's really not a whole lot of other metal pieces. Moving forward, let's talk about that big honking thing that your camera actually comes in. So this is the waterproof housing. The waterproof housing is super cool. You've got the ability to press every single button on the EK7000 using this housing, and it's completely waterproof. From the research that I've done, I believe it goes down to about five to six feet, but I really have questions about the, what the box says about down to 98 feet. And I know that you're probably thinking, why would I ever need to go down that low? That's, it's nice to have, we just really won't need it. But this is great if you have a shot that doesn't have audio attached. And it's important to know that once the uh, camera itself is in the housing, it will absolutely not record any kind of actual um, audio that is worthwhile. Now, I'm gonna have to pause here real quick because I'm getting a phone call and it looks like it's from work, so I'll be right back. Unbelievable. Spam, every time. It, I mean, I'm surprised that they haven't gotten to the point where they can leech out of my, my address book and make it look like it's someone that I actually know calling me. Yeah. Anyway, let's get back to what I was talking about. The underwater housing or the waterproof housing. The waterproof housing is great for pictures, but the audio will be almost unintelligible. So if you are going to be using this waterproof housing, it really should be for something that has already been explained. So a great example would be for our fire technology class. Um, dealing with a sheared hydrant is something that firefighters have to do on a regular basis. A sheared hydrant being a hydrant that has been run over or destroyed by some other uh, object landing on top of it, and usually it's a distracted driver. So we've got a hydrant that needs to be shut off. To get to where the water shutoff is, the firefighter basically has to be in a deluge of water coming down from that sheared fire hydrant. This would be a great way and a great uh, reason to use the underwater or the waterproof housing. There's really no reason to have audio going on. You'll be able to hear bits and pieces, but really what you want to do is you want to show them this is how we get our tool into the area where we need to turn the water off because usually it's right at the base of the fire hydrant. So that's going to be really something that, that will benefit individuals that have that kind of uh, all environments type of learning space, but that's really not going to be for the majority of us. So if you're going to use this, I would highly suggest that you have something already pre-recorded or take the video itself, go into a very, uh, you know, various different video editors and then dub your voice over what's actually going on. And then don't worry about the other stuff that we have going on. Um, just focus on the skill itself. So that's going to be there. Now there is a replacement back uh, uh, back panel, but if you'll look here, and the best way for me to kind of illustrate this is probably going to be with uh, oh, one of my car keys. You can see that it's the waterproof housing, but I can pass my key through it, so it's not really waterproof. It's water splash resistant. This is not a replacement door. What it's supposed to be is an alternative way for you to house this and it, it snaps right in. This can now be all set in place using, as I've said before, those straps. So the strap passes through here and then we can adhere it to something else. So it's good if you think that you're gonna have a lot of splash, but it really is not waterproof because of that hole that's in the back. It's actually a pretty, pretty decent sized hole. So if you are anticipating any kind of immersion, don't use it. Now, let's talk about some of the stuff that I have in this Ziploc bag here. It's all very professional. We've got zip ties. They're all, uh, you know, normal zip ties, nothing special. They're just smaller than your average one. And then we also have a steel cable. This steel cable is great if you want to make sure that if one of these or all of these fail, your camera doesn't fall. The camera itself is impact rated, especially when it's in that waterproof housing, but it's not going to take a drop from 20 feet very often. So having one of these security cables will ensure that your camera isn't destroyed in the event of an apocalyptic event. So that was uh, one thing that I thought was a pretty neat little addition to all of this. 
Now, we've talked about pretty much everything in depth. Um, all of the different pieces are very plug and play friendly, meaning that if you were to take, boy, let's, uh, let's look at this mount. So this mount has the, uh, it has that center, uh, that center receiver so that we can screw things into it. If we want to go ahead and mount that on a larger tripod and then mount the waterproof housing, we can do this. And you can see here, these will actually fit together. So if I pinch myself, ouch, <laughs> then they'll fit together. It's, it's actually very, uh, very intuitive. It makes a lot of sense if you sit down and take a look at it, but I don't want you guys to have to do that. I figure that you guys are probably busy putting your classroom together. Same thing with this other piece that doesn't have that center screw. So this one's gonna be a little bit different. If you wanted to mount it on something that didn't have that center screw or you had something different in mind for the way that you wanted to mount it, now you have that option. And then all the other pieces, they're really just different configurations in which you can mount the camera to the base station. So very, very cool stuff. Now, I also want to talk about two very brief things. I told you guys that I have two different cases here. Let's talk about the one that most of us have probably entirely too many of. Tupperware, love it, learn it, live it, whatever. There's so many of these in my house that honestly, like if someone came through and they stole half of them, I probably wouldn't even realize it. So I'm sure that a lot of you are in the same, in the same boat. All of these components will fit inside of this container, okay? So it's not that large of a container, but it's a good way for you to keep all of this stuff together. Now, I did save the box just in case there were any manufacturing defects or something and I had to send it back but I'm probably only gonna keep it for about 30 days because after that, usually you can't get the warranty. And at that point, I can probably get another box to put it in. What I am planning on doing is using one of these Pelican style cases. Now, I wanna let you know that the Pelican case itself, the, the name brand is unbelievably expensive. A Pelican case of this size, which is uh, you know about, uh, about 10 inches by six inches, it's just prohibitively expensive. This is over a hundred dollars if you get it from Pelican. Now Pelican really is what you want to have if you're going to be sending this to say another country or you're going to be traveling around a lot with it. And uh, I, I know that I'm speaking to Rocco here. You already know that this is our drug box or a larger version is our drug box on the engine and on the ambulance. What I've found is that Harbor Freight actually sells these uh, very similar impact resistant um, water control uh, boxes for a very reasonable price. This box cost me $19, I believe. I have to take a look just to make sure, but it cost me $19. And for what I'm using it for, it makes a lot of sense. What does it look like on the inside? Well, pretty simple. We've got eggshell foam to make sure that there's, uh, there's ample protection throughout the box. And then there's multiple layers of foam. Now this foam is pretty cool. If you haven't used it yet, um, you'll see you can punch out different squares. And what I have right now is set up to perfectly seat my camera inside of it. And again, it, this is not for my EK7000, the new cameras that we just got. It's for the camera that I'm using to film right now. I have the ability to take it around and that's important for me because I'm on the ambulance and I wanna be able to take the highest quality with me wherever I go. So I wanna have that ability. So what I'm planning on doing is buying a box of about this size or maybe a size larger and then creating a, uh, a space for all of the equipment that I would anticipate my skills, would, my skills instructors would need. So they're not gonna get the whole, the whole thing, so I'm probably still gonna use this Tupperware box, but this is what's gonna go out to them, and I'm gonna be sending them out with, uh, I'm gonna be mailing them, or I'm gonna be meeting them at an uh, undisclosed location. I'm just kidding, I'm just gonna find them over at their house and drop this off. If they get deployed on a fire, they aren't able to get back to me, like uh, one of my skills instructors who's been out battling uh, fires throughout Southern California for the last 21 days, I'm gonna send them with a return slip. And that return slip can be generated by FedEx or UPS or USPS, and they can basically just slap the return slip right back here and then mail this as is. I know what you're also thinking, Eric, I don't wanna send this probably expensive equipment in box in a completely you know, open shut kind of thing, not a problem. I've got a couple of padlocks that I'm gonna use, either combo or key, and there's already two different places where I can lock it. All together, 
this box is a small, a very, very small investment on my part so that I can send this out in a way that is professional and, and really in a way that is, uh, that, that is secure and safe. So I can make sure that all my equipment comes back the right way. Now, getting all of that information off of the camera is what we're gonna be going over in the next video. So be sure to check that out. And if you have any questions for me, you can email me directly at eajohnson at capousd.org. A lot of you already have my phone number. Feel free to shoot me a, a text or a phone call. My number is 949-244-7702. I hope this video has been helpful. I'm re actually really excited to send this out and get some of the footage back. And uh, I'm excited to talk to you guys about what I'm planning on doing to make my students get a better understanding of what a day in the life of one of my skills instructors actually looks like. But we'll talk a little bit more. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of your time. And, uh, you know, good luck out there. You guys are doing great. I'm looking forward to get the school year started very soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye.